how do you replace a ECM type outdoor motor and module with a regular PSC motor? Today, that's what I'm gonna be doing. The reason I'm using a PSC motor instead of the ECM type motor with module is because of the price. This unit is one year out of warranty and the motor and module that originally is installed on this piece of equipment is around $1,500 and the customer really can't afford that. It's really too expensive and out of their budget. So I'm gonna install a PSC motor and hopefully we're gonna be around $300 installed today. Before we take this motor apart and get the new motor installed, I'm gonna show you that module. Hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, let's get started. Look at this module. The customer said that they heard a loud noise like a pop and this uh, module looks like it's burned up so we're going to take it out take it apart and look at it but this is what we're going to take out we're not going to need this module anymore this module has a wire and it goes over here to that outdoor motor see this is the wire okay let's go ahead and take out this module and take out that old motor And the shaft. That way I can get it off the blade. Looking better. Get some WD-40. All right. All right, now. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Give it a nice turn. Oh. Yummy. Baby. All right, beautiful. Got my ratchet, my socket. Make sure you turn the breakers off. We'll loosen all these up. Use an 11 millimeter socket. There's the old motor. Ooh, bearings feel a little bit rough. Alright, now we can wrap that plug through there and over here. Oh, got this plug. Alright, take that loose. And these wires go down here. You can see this is a board right here that the wires are on. This is a CFM board. So I'm just going to take and leave this for now. But I'm going to take the screws out and hold the module there. It's one, five sixteenths here. And then some leaves in here. And the other one is back here. Off. All right, let's take a look inside. See what we got. Looks like uh, the burn is here. This capacitor. Oh, both capacitors. Oh, yeah, both capacitors. So that's where it exploded from, I'm guessing. Or it looks like that's pretty evident. Tell me in your experience, if you found anything like this in the field, let me know what you did. Let me know if you were able to get the part under warranty. All right, let's go ahead and look at probably installing some relays right here. I'm thinking that's what we're going to do is install a couple relays. And that's how we're going to control this outdoor motor that we're going to put in. Let's go ahead and take this wire out. So here is the old motor. If you can see that right there, it says one third horsepower right there if you can see that it's one third horsepower 1100 rpm 900 to 1100 and it's 240 volt take a minute pause the video this is the motor we're going to replace it with and we can do one third horsepower with a five microfarad capacitor on high speed okay so one third horsepower is what we're going to do so let's get this motor installed and hopefully these wires will reach and if they won't, then we'll figure that out. All right, so install that new motor. I'm gonna take these. Four bolts and take the slack off. And take the little plug out. Beautiful. Now. 
in place. Get my little slide that on. Easy part almost over with. Then all we gotta do is wire it up. We'll look at the wiring diagram and we'll look at how it was wired and then talk about how we're gonna wire it and then we'll wire it. Mm. Alright, got a little reversible plug right here coming out of the top of the grill. That way it doesn't get caught in fan blades. And here's our wires. We got our capacitor. So we got a couple relays just in case I need those. Don't forget to tighten your nuts. If you're curious, this is a nine millimeter socket. I'm gonna make sure my nuts are really tight. Okay, thank you. Before I wire the new motor in, I'm gonna go over the schematic and show you the wiring for the old motor. This is the outdoor fan motor. This is the outdoor motor control board or module. There are a total of five wires. The brown wire goes to one side of the contactor and the black wire goes to the defrost board to a normally closed set of contacts that control the motor during defrost. So out of these contacts, you have another black wire that goes to the other side of the contactor. So between this brown and this black, that's 230 volt power supply to that motor. The white, the blue, and the yellow wire go to this CFM control board and you have a white wire that goes to high terminal. We have a blue wire that goes to the COM condenser terminal, and the yellow wire goes to the low terminal. Whenever we get a call for high stage, it energizes 24 volts to this terminal, energizing 24 volts to this white wire. Whenever we get a call for low stage, we energize this terminal, and between COM and low, you'll have 24 volts going to the yellow wire and that is what energizes this outdoor fan motor. Now we're going to wire in a relay and that relay is going to energize our outdoor fan motor and I'm going to set it all up, wire it and then talk to you about how I do it. Let's go over the wiring before I wire tie all this and tape it and make it look neat and nice. I have three wires from my outdoor fan motor that I'm hooking up. I have my black wire which is my high speed, my white wire, which is my common, and then my brown, which usually goes to the capacitor. I'm not hooking up the other two wires, which are red for low speed and brown and white. So this is gonna be a three wire hookup. Now I have hooked these wires up to another piece of wire so that I could extend it into this electrical cabinet so I could actually mount my capacitor and my relays inside this cabinet, which makes it safer and makes it last longer. So let's go over the rest of the wiring. Okay, now that we're in this cabinet, we've got two relays, okay? We've got a coil, and then we've got a set of normally open contacts. We've got a coil, and then a set of normally open contacts, okay? And the way that we wired it up, we're gonna go over these three wires first. This is our low voltage. You remember the blue wires are common, the white wire is high, the yellow wire is low, okay? So what, first we took our blue wire and we hooked it to one side of the coil on both relays. We did that by hooking up the blue wire to one side of the coil and then taking a jumper to the other. Then the yellow wire hooks to the other side of the coil. So whenever we get a call for the low, this coil has 24 volts, this normally open set of contacts closes. Okay, same thing here, when we get a call to this wire, we get 24 volts to this relay, this is for the high, it energizes our outdoor fan motor by closing these sets of contacts, okay? This set of normally open contacts. Now, how did I wire the high voltage? Since you know the 24 volts now, let's go back to our fan motor wiring. So fan motor wiring, we've got our red wire, which went to our brown, it goes to our capacitor other side of the capacitor goes into the common, okay, which goes to this side of this set of contacts, okay. Then our black wire goes to our side of our relay that's normally open, and then you take a jumper and you go to the other relay, okay, so that we have our fan motor um, 
wire, our black wire going to here and here. Then our other wire was our white wire, okay? And it goes into this brown, and that is right here, which is to the common. This is one side of the contactor. The last wire is from our set of uh, our defrost board right here, and it is a black wire. And then we go to the other set of the normally open set, uh, set of contacts, and then we jump to the other one. All right, breaker back on. Now we're gonna turn the unit on cooling. All right, cooling just came on. Outdoor fan motor's running. It's working. Beautiful. Glad it's working. A little bit of a recap. You see this brown wire right here? This went to the white wire for the fan motor. Okay, so that right there goes to that side of the contactor. And then the other side of that contactor goes from this black wire here into that defrost board. And that's what energizes our fan and is our 230 volts. Got that wire tied, and now I'm gonna put the panels back on. Went inside, turned it back on cooling. Oh, it's going the wrong direction. Gotta shut the breaker off and reverse it because it's not blowing any air up. All right, good deal. Now, what I gotta do is reverse this. Okay, switch that around. Plug it back in. Boop. Turn the breaker back. <laughs> Got the breaker back on. Now I need to make sure that I measure the amp draw and put this panel on here. That way it's not pulling around the coil. It's pulling through the coil. This will affect your pressure. So keep this panel on whenever you're making your checks. Now it's throwing the air out of the top. Went in, put this panel on. It sucked it right in. Let's measure the amp draw now. Okay, so got the clamp around the black wire, 2.6 amps, is full load amps. We've got two, so it is working. Now I'm gonna talk to you about what you could what I could have done differently. Now what I could have done differently is I could have just used one relay and I could have just tied these two wires together and then took these two wires just to one side of one of these relays and it would have just energized the motor just for that one speed. We really don't need two relays. We can actually use one, and I'll show you how to just use one right now, okay? All right, so to use one relay, this is what we do, okay? Take all this off and take this jumper off and then take this wire off and then just take this yellow and put it right here whoop and then take these two wires take these jumpers off first hold now i'm only using one relay the only thing we changed was we just basically took that yellow wire and we put it on the same side of the coil as this white wire so now everything should work and we save one relay and we don't have to use that relay so because our fan motor is not going to use both speeds. It's only going to use one speed. And it's working. So we'll just take this other relay out and boom. Have more room to mount my capacitor. Took that other relay out. Now I'm going to mount my capacitor and check the charge. Panels are back on. Pressures 125 and 264, 410A. So those pressures look pretty good for low and high side pressures, 410A. Tested the cooling, now we're gonna test the heat and make sure that works. This is a four ton package heat pump. And it's 2011 model. So that's when we installed it, 2011. Unit is running in the heating mode and it is working. So I'd say this was a success. And we got an extra relay we didn't have to use. Perfect. 
If you want to learn more about different types of motors, I've got a video just about motors. I'll drop that down in the link in the description. If you want to learn more about relays and transformers, I've got a great video describing relays, how they work, and typically where they're used. So check out that video. I'll drop that down in the link in the description. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. If you did learn something, let me know in the comments what you learned. If you liked the video, do not forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. If you need help with your project, you need tech support, click the join button, become a member, let me know in the comments, say I joined, and I'll give you my email, and that'll lead to contact with me. I hope that if you have a unit that's out of warranty and you don't want to spend over a thousand dollars on a part that now you know how to save the customer or yourself a lot of money by just installing a regular PSE motor. And what do we lose? We lose a little bit of efficiency but we gain a lot more money in our pocket and it helps our unit to last a little bit longer before we get a new one because when I told the customer the price the customer was automatically going what's a new unit cost because I don't want to spend this much money on a unit and I hate the fact that well I installed this equipment for them and they're having this part cost this much I want to give them more time I want to save them some money and I want to show them that I can do that for them so that's why I did this and this unit may last another four or five years and then they can think about upgrading when they do have the opportunity and it meets the needs of their budget so do what you can your customer will appreciate it especially if they know you're trying to save them money you've been watching HVAC tips for technicians I'm Tad and I'll keep you cool if you let me